Oh, hey friends. We're talking about hand planes today. So, let's go. delicious every time, the hand plane. One of the fundamental hand tools that you're going to pick up early on in your journey as a woodworker if you're interested in hand tool woodworking. Now, there's a million different things that we could explore with this. There's different types of bench planes. There's different sizes of bench planes. This video is not about that. This video is about the fundamental question I get from woodworkers early on in their journey, which is, do I need to spend hundreds of dollars on a new hand plane or can I buy a 50 or $60 one on the internet, refurbish it, tune it up, and make it sing sweetly? And the answer to both of those questions is kind of yes, but let's explore that in more detail. So the first thing we wanna look at is the plane and the components on the interior. So let's start breaking this apart. The first thing I remove here is called the lever cap. This is the thing that holds the entire subassembly together. Then I remove this thing. A lot of folks early on think that this is the blade, but this is actually two components comprised of the blade and the chip breaker. I'm gonna take this apart and show you these two different components. Both of these are important. If either one of these is in really bad shape when you're looking for an old plane, the plane won't work. Those are those two components. Now what I have left in here is the casting and the frog. So let's take this frog out very briefly just so you can see what it looks like. I've loosened these two screws in here, and then I've got this frog. Now this frog does a couple of different things. First and foremost, it beds the blade, right? So it has this blade set at a 45 degree angle. It's got this wheel back here, which adjusts the blade forward and backwards. And then I've got this. This is called the lateral adjustment lever. So this allows me to move the blade side to side like this to make sure that that blade is parallel to the sole. Last but certainly not least, I have the casting itself. Now when it comes to old Stanleys, I don't really wanna say the older the better, but to some extent that's true. If there's anything after kind of World War II, after 1950, I'm not really gonna purchase it. That's when a lot of American manufacturing started to go downhill. This particular casting, I don't know if you can see this in here, but there's a stamp and this reads April 1910. So I know roughly what vintage this is. I know this was manufactured between 1910 and I believe 1912. And I know that the quality of steel is pretty good on this. The other thing I really like about this plane is why it's one of my personal favorites. You never see sapwood in this handle. Guys, this is just, this is just sex appeal. I'm not gonna lie to you. The reason I bought this, I have like three Stanley number fours already. The reason I bought this is just because there was sapwood in the handle. and. It's such a dumb thing, but it's so delightful. I love this plane, it's so sexy. So, that's my Stanley number four. That's my go-to, and those are the components in there. So let's say I'm in the market for an old Stanley. What am I looking for in these old planes to make sure I don't get a lemon? The first thing I'm looking at is my casting. I wanna make sure that I don't have a crack up the side here. I wanna make sure that I don't have a crack along the mouth. The other thing I'm gonna look for is to see if this handle has been repaired. That can be worked around. It's really just a comfort issue for me. And then lastly, making sure that none of these components are severely pitted and rusted. If I have a blade that has a tremendous amount of rust and some severe pitting on the backside, meaning that there are a lot of indentations or holes in the steel, that's gonna prevent me from getting a sharp edge. And I usually like to keep these irons, the original irons, in my old Stanleys. Of course, you can replace these with a contemporary iron. But if we're talking about getting these old Stanleys because we're trying to save money, that doesn't really make any sense. Just make sure that it's not severely pitted, especially on the underside of my blade. All right, so we've gone over the components of the hand plane, what I would look for if I was buying an old one, but if I'm buying a new one, I don't really have to look for any of that, right? Right out of the box, these planes, whether from Lee Nielsen or from Veritas, come ready to use, right? Yes, but remember you do have to sharpen the blade, and this is a mistake that I've seen people make in the past. Now. This is a good moment to acknowledge that I have worked for Lee Nielsen in the past. I did the hand tool events with them for six or seven years. I know Tom Lee Nielsen personally, he's a friend of mine and he's been a wonderful proponent of my career as a woodworker for a decade. So I do have some biases. I want to acknowledge that that's only fair. Now that being said, 
as I was working the hand tool events, my job was to teach people how to use hand tools, not to sell hand tools, but to teach people how to integrate them into their workflow. And the biggest mistake that I saw beginner woodworkers make was that they would order a plane from Lee Nielsen, they would get it out of the box, they would set it up, they'd be super excited and it would cut, but it wouldn't cut beautifully because the blade is not honed. It's not super sharp, it's off a machine sharp. So these tools are ready to go. Everything about them is really lovely out of the box, despite what company you purchase from, but you do have to hone the blade. So if you don't know how to sharpen, that's going to be an issue for you. But ultimately what I want to do in this video is to sharpen all four of these up to the same level so you can see how they function comparatively old to new, thick to thin, brass to steel, et cetera, et cetera. So let's lick these blades up. Now here ultimately is the test. I've got two pieces of wood. I've got all four of my planes licked up, cleaned up, sharpened beautifully. We're going to see how they work. So let's dive into what they actually do. So first up will be my Lee Nielsen five and a half. I've got a piece of pine here. I've got this set. And you can hear a beautiful shaving. You can see a nice full width shaving here. Paper thin. Let's see if I can get out of the way of the sunlight here. And we've got a beautiful crisp surface on this piece of pine. Now next up, I've got my Veritas low angle jack just for comparison. So let's actually see how this functions. And again, you can see I'm getting paper thin, perfect shavings. But the question is surface quality. Perfect, smooth, consistent surface quality. So we've done our two contemporary planes. Let's dive into what an old Stanley is or is not capable of. This is my number five. Now, again, paper thin shavings, beautiful. But what I'm not getting is full width shavings. Now with a little more love and tenderness to that blade, I can probably make that happen on here, but that's one of the things to be mindful of. Now last but certainly not least, this sexy little minx right here. Sharpened up, tuned up, just the way I did the other three. So let's see what she does. Mm, mm she sings. Oh yeah. Now, I will admit this is my favorite plane, so I take really good care of this casting, this blade, and you can see full width shavings, even thinner than the other two, just absolutely whisper thin on here. But more importantly, oh, that surface, guys. Oh, that surface. Let's see if we can get a close up of this. Oh, man. Guys, do you see, like, not even the tiniest bit of tear out. Just glass smooth, beautiful to the touch. And that's off a plane that's over 100 years old. So, what conclusion have I come to? Do you need to spend multiple hundreds of dollars on a brand new hand plane from a contemporary manufacturing company? Or can you get away with a plane that's over 100 years old uh, found on the internet for maybe less than $150, refurbish, renew, and use that for years to come. In short, you don't need to buy new planes. The old Stanleys are beautiful, they're wonderful. You can get them in really good condition for less money. And, and this is the important part, if your budget does not allow you to buy a new hand plane and lumber to build a thing, spend money on an old hand plane. Spend less money on tools and more money on materials so that you can continue to build. Now, if you have the budget and it's not going to keep you from actually making things, a new hand plane is a beautiful thing. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. These things out of the box, whichever company you go to, are ready to use. 
you know what a hand plane should feel like when it comes out of that box and you sharpen it up a little bit. You don't have to worry about adjustments. You don't have to worry about surface rust. You don't have to worry about the quality of the tool steel or did you get taken for parts. It's just an easier way to get into woodworking and they're beautiful tools to use. So you can go either direction. It really depends on which way you wanna go. That may be an unsatisfactory answer to some of you, but I love all of these tools. They're brilliant. My five and a half, my low angle jack, my four with this beautiful, sexy sapwood, and my old five. I use all of them. All four of these live under my bench with my four and a half. These are the five bench planes I keep within arm's reach so that I can use them at any time. And you can see three of them are old, two of them are new. And if we're gonna be honest here, if we're breaking out all the planes, this is the fleet of planes that I use on a daily basis. You can see the breakdown is literally three new, three old, and this guy, which is just my favorite plane in the whole world. I love all of these things. You can't go wrong with any of them if you're willing to put in the time and the effort to clean these up. They're beautiful planes. If you're willing to spend your budget on tools, these are beautiful planes as well choose wisely. So friends, that's today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was educational. I hope you learned something and I hope you're excited to explore hand tools in your woodworking process because they're really a delight to get to use once you learn how to sharpen and take care of them well. But that's that friends and I will see y'all in the next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.